They represent 11 nations. Three yachts to a team, they're competing for the symbol of international ocean racing supremacy, the Admiral's Cup, and Australia is the defender. The first race of the four event series gets underway in a blaze of colour from Portsmouth on England's south coast. Ahead lies a 240 mile journey and the weathermen have predicted difficult conditions. America's Red Rooster, brand new in the mystery boat of the fleet, gets a good start as they sweep toward the French coast. Prospect of Whitby, England's ace boat is moving well and her crew is confident she'll be the driving force behind England's bid to wrest the cup back from Australia. Phantom, well up after a copybook start, consolidates England's position. She passes the first mark, hot in pursuit of Australia's flyer Ragamuffin. The fleet has sailed only two miles and the Australian leads the cup field. She's performing magnificently. The outlook for Australia is good. Ragamuffin will climb out to a winning position in the work to hours light vessel of southern England and the legs to Bajorel light vessel, the Havre and back to Portsmouth. Australia's Kumalu strikes heavy weather as she works down the French coast. Squalls lash across the sea, but she revels in the tough conditions. And the drenched crew can still exult to the thrill of the chase as she crashes through the waves in hot pursuit of the leaders. This is ocean racing at its best. This is what has drawn the Australians halfway around the world. The opportunity to prove their championship qualities in the toughest, most exacting company of all. As she breasts the waves in immaculate style, Kumalu reflects the confidence of the Australian defence. Dawn the next day, and conditions at Portsmouth have eased to a 15-knot breeze as the cup boats return to England and the finish. The 73-foot Argentinian Fortuna, biggest of the cup boats, uses her huge spread of sail to advantage as she surges towards the line. Fortuna will consistently finish ahead of the fleet, but be handicapped out of contention. Hallowan, the biggest American team member, chases hard after Fortuna. Ragamuffin is close behind, coming home with a rush to win and give Australia a morale-boosting lead in the series. Maybell, the beautiful Italian, displays a fine turn of speed to finish sixth and loom as a cup threat, while Ruben, the German, is no danger, as are the French, Dutch, Spanish and Bermudan boats. America's Red Rooster, smaller than Ragamuffin, finds the easing conditions to her liking and improves in the run to the line to gain an encouraging second place. The rooster has every right to crow. England's Prospect of Whitby, small like Rooster, finishes with a flourish to gain a valuable third. Australia's Mercedes III slips home a graceful but unobtrusive fourth, while teammate Kumalu romps in for seventh. First, fourth and seventh, a 38-point lead for Australia. Cows, the remaining three races will start from here. 
The harbour basin fills with sleek craft and the small resort town comes alive with spectators from all corners of the globe. The Australians manage to ignore the attractions and concentrate on the preparations they hope will keep them the Admiral's Cup. Physical fitness is high on the list and a jogging session gets the crew in top shape for the demanding sailing still ahead. Maintenance is endless, and Ragamuffin's owner skipper, Sid Fisher, supervises rubbing back her smooth lines. Like the skippers of Kumalu and Mercedes 3, Fisher has assembled a crew from the cream of Australia's blue water yachtsmen, 25 in all. And Rothmans has backed them to the hilt in their bid to again beat the world's best. The sharp-eyed skippers supervise a near back-breaking routine, but someone always needs a breather. In the Red Rooster camp, preparations are equally exacting. Retractable keel, outboard rudder and other features combine to make her a potential sensation. She's Australia's biggest danger and quayside experts are predicting a straight-out ragamuffin rooster duel. Dick Carter, an American designer, owner, skipper, is certain the series will vindicate his latest experiment to build a faster ocean racer. Ted Kaufman checks Mercedes 3. In contrast to the brand new rooster, his craft is a veteran. She led the successful Australian challenge in 1967 and he's confident she'll play just as big a role this time. Fisher discusses the problems of being new to English waters with Kumalu skipper Dennis O'Neill. The results of the channel race have failed to reflect this and the two skippers are determined to maintain their record throughout the entire series to prove their performance was no flash in the pan. They still see the English as their main threat, but there's also that boat, Red Rooster. Cows foreshore, and the British crowds gather on the morning of the second race, anxious for a home team win. If Britain is to perform well, it must be in the short Solent races, where local knowledge is of paramount importance. The 36-mile Britannia Cup is underway in a light nor'wester and the battle of tactics is on. America's Palawan breaks for the south shore ahead of Kumalu, which makes the best start of the Australian boats. The top English boat, Prospect of Whitby, heads for the North Shore, her crew searching for better conditions. While to the south, the Italian, Levantades, is already running out of wind. Rooster, her keel lifted, hurries down the middle of the swirling Solent, skimming over the myriad of mudbanks. The progress of England's Phantom contrasts vividly. She's becalmed on the South Shore. Ragamuffin, too, is in trouble off the Isle of Wight, and when the breeze dies away to nothing, she anchors to prevent being swept backwards by the swift tide. Look at the black yacht, America's Carina, anchored against the tide, yet overtaking the white yacht ahead of her. Off the mainland to the north, Maybell is one of the first boats to pick up the new breeze as she works to windward. The breeze finally reaches the becalmed southern boats, Kumalu fills her sails and tacks for the first mark. France's Coriolan, with the best of the wind, is already far ahead of the Australians. Maybell, close behind, fights the strong tide as she rounds the first mark. England's prospect of Whitby strikes trouble at the beginning of the second leg, She's well up after the wind change, but her crew frustratingly fouls the spinnaker. Palawan's American crew show how it should be done, and the striped spinnaker billows in a riot of colour. <laughs> 
Rooster, fighting up through the fleet, sets just as fast and surges down the course as miles ahead, a non-cup boat, the 12-metre American Eagle, leads the fleet. Ragamuffin, almost last to get the new wind and all of five miles behind Eagle, battles to get back into the race. She rounds the mark and good crew work gives her the fastest spinnaker set of the entire race. 15 seconds. Kumalu, one mile behind Ragamuffin, begins leg two, while still on leg one is Mercedes three. The striped spinnaker signals prospect of Whitby's arrival off cows. On handicap, she's running just behind cup leader Coriolan. Rooster is well up, and the light breeze is definitely favouring the smaller class of boats. She's leading rival Ragamuffin and running fifth on handicap. Having rounded the second mark, Eagle charges back through the hazardous and crowded cow's moorings on leg three, a spectacular sight. Kumalu, now tenth, is still running toward the second mark, neck and neck with Francis Pasha. Maybell is consolidating her third position and trying to gain on prospect of Whitby, holding down second, as she passes cows to complete her first lap in freshening conditions. Enjoying the now decidedly gusty weather, Rooster flies along behind Prospect. After the early calm, Phantom has finally got to the third leg and she tacks past cows on her way to 10th place. Australia's Kumalu has the bit between her teeth and she's on her way to 6th. The leader, Coriolan, streams downwind again, a clear leg and six miles ahead of Mercedes. Prospect is now hot on Coriolan's stern, sailing at maximum speed as the breeze hits 25 knots. Italy's La Meloria, also on leg four, rolls heavily through the white caps. Palawan's antics are even more spectacular. Her bigger sail area is healing her 30 degrees and more, but her speed is unaffected, and that's what counts. She'll go on to 18th for America. Ragamuffin, on leg four after the early delays, has overhauled Rooster. As the race nears its end, the conditions continue to freshen, and back down the course, several crews are in trouble. Under the watchful eyes of the Royal Navy, American Eagle races toward the finish and line honours, revelling in the heavy weather. She also got home first in the Channel race and will do so in the remaining two events. Coriolan, hard pressed, but her crew drive her on to the line. After all, what's a 25-knot breeze and heavy swell when the glory of France is at stake? But victory will slip from her grasp. She'll be disqualified for a minor breach of rules. Mabel, the Italian, will not win either. But what sailor would squabble over valuable second-place points? The win is England's. Prospect of Whitby caps a brilliant performance with a rollicking, almost arrogant finishing burst. The other English boats finish the Britannia Cup 8th and 10th to bring their team's point score to 197, consolidating their second cup position overall. Coriolan motors to the moorings, her crew jubilant with the apparent victory. The shock of elimination is yet to come. Ragamuffin finishing in 7th place. Kumalu 6th and Mercedes 13th boosts Australia's total to 238 points. Two races to go and they still lead the series. Red Rooster gets 3rd. 
the other two Americans 14th and 18th to bring the team's point score to 181, only 16 behind Britain, but 57 behind Australia. After the unkind conditions of the Britannia Cup, the New York Yacht Club Cup is a much happier affair for the Australians. Conditions are fresh right from the start, and Ragamuffin, Kumalu and Mercedes fight to get clear of the spectacular melee. The fleet is scattering shorewards to avoid the mainstream currents. Maybell is soon challenged by Ragamuffin for the lead, and victory is hers as she forces the Australians to tack away. Britain's Phantom, after her poor performance in the previous race, flies to windward, handling the conditions well. Kumalu likes the weather, and she leads a group of boats in the dash to the first of two marks in the three-leg, 36-mile race. Prospect of Whitby, fresh from her Britannia Cup win, trails the Australian. Ragamuffin revels in these conditions and crashes through the seas like a true thoroughbred to lead the fleet at the first mark. It's another good set, the reward for months of solid training. Prospect of Whitby rounds, a crew readying to hoist the spinnaker. Two non-cup boats are close behind. And here comes Coriolan, smarting from her Britannia Cup disqualification, storming after the leaders, determined to prove she can win Admiral's Cup races fair and square. The fleet streams down the 20 miles long leg to the Leamington spit mark. Ragamuffin still heads the cup boats on handicap and her crew go flat out for victory. If she can win, only bad luck in the last race will prevent Australia from retaining the coveted cup. Phantom still looms as a possible threat. She's doing well on the downwind run. So is that red rooster who's come from behind to Harry Coriolan. Kumalu isn't far in arrears of the American. As she jibes, she's ideally situated to support Ragamuffin and her crew concentrate on staying with the rooster who looks set to fly. The mahogany-hulled Kumalu is the prettiest of the Australian defenders. But beauty alone doesn't win races. It takes a top crew and she's got one. They'll bring her home fourth. Prospect of Whitby tries to stay with Kumalu, but it's too tough and she'll finish no higher than fifth. The German non-cup entry Hamburg are ground and getting it off the mud bank is proving an agonizingly slow exercise. Mercedes is the centre boat, and Ted Kaufman and his crew are lining it up for a burst to the finish. Ragamuffin approaching the mark and closing up on Evane, a non-cup British entry. Her crew prepare to haul up the headsail for the five-mile beat to the finish. A championship performance is vital if she's to win. The boat and her crew can do no more than their best, and that's how she sails home to cars. Around comes Maybell, lining up for second place in as many races. Behind her is Red Rooster, and this controversial American has gained considerable ground by lifting her keel and short-cutting across mud banks. The rest of the fleet has had to battle the midstream currents. Kumalu is followed around by Diana, who seems to have a thing about Australian boats. She chases O'Neill and his crew for the last few miles of the race. Kumalu's fourth will be her best performance of the series. 
Ragamuffin will finish third and Mercedes tenth, boosting the team's cup point score to 317, now well clear of Britain and America. Prospect of Whitby is to come home fifth to challenge Ragamuffin and Red Rooster as most consistent boats. A smile for Ragamuffin and her crew as she takes third, closely tagged by the pretty Italian Maybell, glamour girl of the series. But the moment is Rooster's. First is her reward for being unorthodox and able to take the shortcut. Her crew helped a little too. The cup boats are slipped again in preparation for the last and most vital of the four races. It's the 650 mile Fastnet and it carries triple points. Ragamuffin is Australia's best hope for the high placing, especially if the weather's rough the way she likes it. So, her crew prays for all the elements can provide and double check to make certain the boat and gear are in top shape. The sails get particular attention. They might well be the key to success or failure. Red Rooster, the threat, gets out on the water for a final practice session. Her crew are keen to hoist that headsail much quicker, and as skipper Dick Carter notes their speed, he allows that Rooster must stand a great chance of victory. He would swap his crew for no other. To him, they're the best there is, and they won't let him down in the crucial fastnet. The Australians spend the eve of the fastnet discussing tactics. They cannot hide their tenseness. The climax is approaching. The winner of the Admiral's Cup for 1969 is about to be decided. It's a dull grey day as the record fleet of 170 boats sets off on the long haul to Ireland and back. As they run down the Solent to the Channel, Gordon Reynolds, the Australian team manager, farewells his charges. They have a 44-point lead over Britain and 73 over America. The Australians will need only moderate performances to retain the trophy for another two years. All eyes are on Ragamuffin. The breeze is a light easterly and she makes good speed as the lowering sky signals the approach of rain. Kumalu is barely recognized as Drizzle blankets the fleet. Visibility is bad in the confined waters of the Solent and the crews are keen to get out to the channel and to thrill to the challenge of the open sea. The Needles Rocks signal the Solent's end, and from now the going will be anything but easy. The Australian boats are well placed in the 31-strong cup fleet as they head out to sea. The air aboard Ragamuffin is one of confidence as the breeze begins to stiffen. Ahead of her lies a 650-mile triangle of open sea. Across to Fastnet Rock off Ireland and back to Portsmouth via Bishop's Rock in the Scilly Isles. The journey will take some four days and the race deservedly has a reputation as one of the world's toughest. The bearing is for Fastnet Rock and Fisher gives Ragamuff in her head as she races towards the lonely Sentinel. This is what she was built for, to show she's a world beater. It's all systems go and the finely tuned racing machine responds magnificently to the challenge. Three days out and she passes the lonely rock and then it's full speed for the finish. The nine men aboard Ragamuffin hope Kumalu and Mercedes are going as well. They are. On corrected times, the Australian boats round Fastnet in fourth, fifth and sixth places. They're not to know of the vast calms lying ahead and that Kumalu and Mercedes will run out of wind at the race's most crucial stage. 
England's best hope, prospect of Whitby, smaller than Ragamuffin, sails equally well until conditions sour. So far, she's recorded third, first and fifth places in performances far superior to those of the other two English yachts, Phantom and Cassatet. Skipper Arthur Slater drives her hard. Stubby little rooster, sensational little rooster, she and her crew rocket back to England. Her wind-up keel and retractable rudder have made her the surprise of the series. Her design has caused furrowed brows in several of the opposing camps, and it'll be interesting to see if a new design rule prevents a whole flock of roosters being hatched for future series. It's just after dusk, fifth day. It's Ragamuffin, creeping into Plymouth for second in the fastnet. She has done well. Her crew is jubilant. If Kumalu and Mercedes can finish in the first dozen places, Australia will hold the cup. But the wind fades fast, and Red Rooster just manages to cross the line before a vast calm halts all the boats astern. For Red Rooster, a fastnet win. And for America, the points from just one race lift her standing from third position to become the Admiral's Cup winner. Australia's Mercedes and Kumalu finally drift home 19th and 20th, giving Australia second cup place overall, just 15 points short of outright victory. The British finish the series third. But Australia's spirit of challenge has not suffered, and her Admiral's Cup sailors will return to battle another day. For this is the way the Australians go ocean racing.